Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, you can get a different vantage point of obviously a facility or the one they had over there has got uh, all the uh, kind of behind the scenes um, locations that we go through in a normal game day kind of set in the locker room, weight room, practice facility, the uh, arena. So pretty, pretty cool to get a different vantage point that you might not otherwise have. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, for a box yeah. on your eyes, yeah, I mean, it, it takes you right where where you want to be. What have you seen from Houston this season? Yeah, they've kind of reformed, obviously, Dan Tony, Harden's kind of kind of assist for me. What's kind of different? I mean, they play a very similar style, and they always have the up-tempo, shoot a lot of threes, move the ball. Um, obviously, they feature James and a lot of decision-making situations and putting the ball in his hands um, to initiate plays. So you got to, more so than ever against them, you have to be on the same page because one breakdown can lead to a wide open three for a lot of capable shooters on their team. Um, and they like to shoot them. So if you let them get hot or let them get open looks, it could be a long night for you. When you play a team that you've played often in the playoffs, is there extra whatever emotional feelings because you do get to know teams you play in the playoffs so well and they know you? Is there more when you then play them the following regular season? Uh, I mean, there's a familiarity, obviously, like you said, because you play high intensity games and meaningful games against the team. For us, we played them two years in a row, so uh, there's a little bit of history, but we know. You know, year to year, you know which teams are most likely, you know, playoff bound and that kind of deal. So you kind of have an understanding of what it's going to take to uh, beat those kind of teams and, and not only in regular season, but in the playoffs. So you kind of want to have good showings against, you know, those kind of teams and, and um, try to send a message, or, you know, throughout the course of the season in case you do see them later on. What you and the you guys in the Rockets have the believe it still stands the top five three point uh, make guys in the league right now. Was that a situation where you think tonight will be based off of who's shooting the three better tonight or who had that right? For sure. Um, it's a big part of both of our offenses, but I think it's about who's uh, what kind of threes and, and, and if they're contested, if the defensive pressure is where it needs to be, um, you know, they can still shoot a lot of them and, and make some tough ones. But for over the course of the game, for us, if we can create more open threes than they can, uh, I like our chances just with the talent we have. So um, it's, it's hard to take it away. You got to just, you know, force them into contested ones and the tough ones and, and try to speed them up a little bit. Team. Like if that's, that's still you guys' label. You guys, are, as of right now, shooting above 50% from the field. Is that, I asked Iggy this yesterday, is that something that's su sustainable? For sure it is. You, it's the, again, the way that you create you know, the shots for each other and the way the ball moves. And um, you know, For us, we have a lot of playmakers that can find open guys, and we have a lot of shooters and finishers that can finish plays. So. I would definitely say it's sustainable. Um, you know, allowing our offense to create open jump shots, whether it's threes, long twos, whatever, but also creating uh, miscommunication where you get, you know, paint touches, you get finishes on the rim, not in a non traditional way other than just posting up guys. It's, it's different ways to get in the paint, and get the ball in there, and finish. So um, we've shown we can do it, and I'm sure to continue. A jump, people call you guys a jump shooting team. Do you take that as a knock, or is it? A, how, how do you how do you look at that? Uh, I think the first time I actually thought about it, I think Charles Barkley said it like two years ago when we were going for our championship run and said jump shooting team when we win a championship, yada yada. But once again, it's, it's all about yeah, you can't just come down and just fling them. Um, but we have great shooters that if we can create open shots for great shooters, then Cater is right into our strengths. Um, but we've shown 
we can be a, you know somewhat versatile in, in our approach of um, using our uh, shooting abilities to kind of create other opportunities in the paint and, and get the ball moving in that sense. So uh, I don't think it's a knock at all. I think it's a kind of like a compliment. If you jump shooting team and you can shoot 50% from the field and keep doing that, then it means you, you're really good at shooting jumpers. You said he saw some slippage out of you guys the last three games. Have, have you seen that where? Kind of I mean, uh, yeah, there's some things that we've, uh, on the defensive end, just miscommunication and a little lack of energy that we um, showed a little bit in the Laker game down there and then obviously against Atlanta, so, uh, or Minnesota, but we, uh, we're doing it about winning. We understand we're talking about it every day. You know, what can we do to be better? What can we do to, to uh, have better performances, get closer to a 48-minute um you know, game and and that's that's the mission. So it's going to be ups and downs, but you got to you got to obviously find ways to win in the process. Is Draymond more annoying this season than in the years past, or is it about the same? Draymond's an angel, man. He's a saint. Don't you talk about Draymond like that? He's a saint. Keep his name out your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Thanks, Steph.